second speaker in this session is Matt Clark, uh, who's the senior risk manager with uh, F FC Stone. Uh, Matt began his life on a, uh, a farming operation in the southwest slopes of New South Wales and has worked in the area of commodity trading and risk management for over 18 years. He spent the first half of his uh, working career with uh, Collie Cotton and Namoy Cotton in trading and client services, as well as some time with rural funds management uh, in their operations. The second half uh, of his career has been spent with the Commonwealth Bank, uh, leading the soft commodity sales or dealing uh, in the dealing desk and working with clients. More recently, he's moved to FC Stone, a global commodity risk management and supply chain advisory and execution business where he works with a wide range of clients offering uh, trading solutions, advisory and supply chain solutions. Um, so someone who's right at the heart of risk management in agricultural supply chains, um, Matt uh, brings some very interesting perspectives. So please welcome Matt Clark. Thank you, Mick, for your kind introduction and uh, as well as the invitation to speak at this forum. Um, as Mick mentioned, my name is Matt Clark. Um, I've been in a fortunate position to spend 18 years in the supply chain, uh, primarily working with risk management. It's, it's very encouraging to see risk management being put on the agenda at, at forums like this, as it is, as it is a really important part of, a, of an enterprise's success. So as a US securities firm, we have a disclaimer and our aim is to have the biggest disclaimer in the room. So uh, um, I, th I think it may be quite challenging to read that, but if anyone would like a copy of that to read afterwards, I'd be happy to provide that. Today I'm just going to run through, um, I'm going to define the supply chain and define what market risk is. I'll talk a little bit about who typically holds um, market risk in the supply chain and, and some of the changing trends over the last decade. We'll spend some time talking about how and the, how a producer will manage market risk and some of the choices that they have to make and we'll pull it all the, in together at the end and talk about enhanced market information and, and what that is and, and how to access that. So in very, very simple terms, the supply chain is made up of um, producers, uh, intermediaries, processes and consumers. Th this is a very simplified version of the supply chain. Um, the, the goods or commodities will make its way through many hands from get taking from producer to consumer. But, but in each case there's an element of processing, there are people needed to, to facilitate the movement of commodities, there's the producer and the ultimate consumer. We've seen some, some changes in trends in the ownership of this supply chain in recent years and, and it's been talked about um, quite a bit over the last two days. So, uh, and we'll elaborate a little bit more on that. So the, the supply chain is an extremely um, complex operation. Uh, it, the end result though is, is quite simple. It's about producing a raw product and turning it into a, into a consumable item um, that's used in modern society. In each step listed in, in, in these boxes on this slide, there are, there, there's the need for expertise uh, to be able to manage that particular aspect of the supply chain and, and risk management is, is no exception to that. We'll just talk a little bit about what is market risk. Um, market risk is, is the, the impact of price volatility on an enterprise's performance. Um, an enterprise makes or earns revenue by making sales and the price that, that, that uh, um, that each enterprise will, will receive is going to be dictated by what's happening in, in domestic and global markets. Commodity prices are always fluctuating. They're impacted by macro and micro factors, things such as just basic supply and demand fundamentals, what's happening in uh, uh, particular geographies in terms of climatic, um, political situations and so on. Commodity prices are also impacted by what's happening in, the, in, in financial markets generally. What are in, where, where are investors wanting to put their money and, and, um, and risk on and risk off uh, um, events that occur every day of the week? Market risk has a significant impact on, 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 a, on, a, on an enterprise's performance. So in, in this example, I'm using um, the Boyce and, and CRDC uh, benchmarking data that they put out each year, and this is from from 2012, 
this is the top 20% producer um, benchmark that, that, that these guys put out. And it's a very useful tool in terms of, of, of benchmarking a business's operation. But extrapolating that information over, over market movements shows that a 1% change in commodity prices has a 2.6% impact on, um, on an enterprise's operating profit and loss, which is significant. So again, using the top 20% cotton producer, a $20 a bale, which is a 4% movement in, uh, in commodity prices, will have a $200, $270 impact on the operating p and of that business. So that's significant. To put that into perspective, since 1978, the cotton price has, range, has a $188 average range um, each year. Now, there are a couple of years that have, have had a, a more meaningful impact on that range than others, but, but if you apply that $188 movement in, in commodity price over a top 20% cotton producer, that's a $2.5 million impact on, on, uh, um, on the net, operate, net operating P&L of that business. It's, it's significant. So I've spoken a little bit about producer, the impact of market risk on a producer, but there, along the supply chain, all elements, or most elements of the supply chain will hold market risk. For example, a producer has it over his revenue stream. A trader or a processor or an intermediary or, an, or a processor has it over the management of the margin between their buy and the sell of, the, of, of, of their product as it passes through their hands. The, the, the fast-moving consumer good business or, or whoever is um, the last stage of processing has a, has a direct um, buy side risk. So this risk is right across the supply chain. Now in, in this slide I've used cotton, wheat and sugar as three examples of, of the various parts of that supply chain and they're because they're three um, sectors in, the ag in, in Australian agriculture that do actively manage their risk at the moment. When you also look at funding the supply chain, the management of, 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 of risk in terms of managing the price volatility over inventory becomes quite an important factor as well. So one observation over the last decade is through um, rationalisation in the market, we've seen risk transfer from the, the generally the intermediary being the AWBs, QSLs of the world along the supply chain. And, and, and that has put a lot of the the, the, I guess the burden associated with managing risk back onto the producer. Um, why has this happened? Deregulation of markets. Markets have rationalised. There's been a desire for greater choice by the producer and the consumer to be able to take greater control of, of, um, of, of the setting of their price and the management of their risk. And there's also been some issues around managers' performance. So the benefit of that has been greater transparency in pricing in some sectors. It's created opportunities for those that, 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 are, that are skilled in the area of risk management to be able to, uh, um, to play a more active role and, and control the risks that, that better match their business. It's allowed the use of more sophisticated products and, um, and it's just generally provided greater choice. But there is a downside to rationalisation. There's a cost, there's a removal of a safety net, there's uh, increased volatility in income and, um, and there are new skills required. And as a result, participants in the supply chain need access to what we call enhanced market information and I'll talk a little bit about what that is in a moment. It's also worth noting um, through the rationalisation in the market that there's also been a credit risk aspect and an operational risk aspect brought into most agribusinesses and, and, and those two require attention and, and that, that also fits into that um, category of enhanced market information. So reverting back to um, a producer focus again, a producer has um, a wide range of, of, of tools in their toolkit that they can use to, to manage their, their market risk or their price risk. Some of these tools are similar to what, what have been about in the past, being pools or collective marketing arrangements, then right the way through to sophisticated um, OT, structured OTCs, bank swaps and so on. We've seen in certain cases groups of producers get together to, to aggregate their risk and, and employ um, a, a risk manager or the services of a risk management firm. So, so through this greater choice there's, um, there's been um, opportunity created for, for, for producers to more actively manage their risk. But to effectively manage this risk these participants need access to enhanced market information. 
So what is enhanced market information? It's more than just um, information based around what is happening price-wise, what's happening in the market, um, what is a good price, what is a bad price historically. That, that is one aspect to enhanced market information. But enhanced market information is also about recognising your risk, understanding what the risk is. Stakeholder risk appetite. Every business will have a different risk appetite that they're willing to, to have. And as a result, having that information will, will, um, will have an impact on how that firm manages its risk. Um, sensitivity to, to market risk. Most people aren't aware of the impact of, of what, a, what a market move will have on their business. If you go back to that voice analysis, 1% move in price, 2.6% 2, 2 increase on uh, uh, impact on uh, operating performance. Some businesses will look to leverage that up, some will look to leverage that down. So, uh, so understanding risk appetite and sensitivity is key to, uh, um, or is a key part of enhanced market information. Product knowledge as well. The last slide we showed a, a wide range of, uh, um, of new products in the market that, that are readily available to, to, um, to manage price risk. The use of products, aligning products to, a, to, a, to the culture of an individual firm is important. We all need to be careful that we don't bring additional risk in the business through risk management and, and aligning those products um, requires the use of, of enhanced market information. So now for, now for the, the, the selfless plug. Um, FC Stone is one area um, that, that participants in the supply chain can access um, uh, enhanced market information. There are many other firms in the market as well that, are, that offer very similar services. And, and anyone in the supply chain looking to, to, uh, um, to increase their, their access to this style of information and, and products and services, I encourage you to talk to all firms in the marketplace to, to gain a balanced view of what's available. But, but our business is, is uh, approaching a century um, a century of existence and, and we were born out of assisting Midwest uh, um, cooperatives manage their price risk. They were, they were being on the wrong end of, the, of a lot of transactions and weren't delivering a, a, the effective result to their client. For our business that's broadened it out to being a global player where we, um, where we uh, uh, have, a, have a thousand advisors such as myself um, uh, providing advisory services to clients. A key part of what um, what I'm talking about today is, is an advisory style mandate and, um, and that's, that's about accessing enhanced market information to help, help the producer um, or the consumer or the trader or the processor to make decisions that best fit their, um, their, their business's risk appetite. So in this case we um, and other firms undertake a similar um, process where we uh, um, we sit the stakeholder down, we talk about how, how much, we talk about their business, understanding the fluctuations in, produc in production, talk about their, the risk appetite, the, the, the amount of risk that the business can handle, and we draw up a strategic plan. This normally is a two or three month exercise and, uh, um, and that involves getting stakeholders together at a number of times to, to really get, a, get a, um, a plan that helps them move their business forward, use the information available in the market to execute a marketing plan that, that best suits their business. A lot of RMPs are self-liquidating. Uh, the uh, the upskilling that goes on through this style of process positions the stakeholder to be um, in a in a position in the long term to be able to make these decisions without the assistance of, of, external, of an external provider such as FC Stone. And this same, this same process is, can be utilised across all aspects of the supply chain. And in, interestingly, of our, we have a strong Brazilian client base and 75% of our clients in Brazil utilise advisory services to assist them in, in, terms, of, um, in terms of managing their risk. So I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, I guess the key message that we wanted, I wanted to get across was that there is additional risk in the supply chain and that additional risk has, has, has come about through rationalisation in the market. That risk has, has rippled down the supply chain to the producer and up the supply chain to the consumer. This risk has an impact on, on the performance of, a, of, a, of an enterprise. Go back to that figure, 1% movement in, in cotton price, 2.6% impact on, on operating P&L. So that's significant. 
And to manage this risk, you need to be able to access the, the information based around products, market information, risk profiles, and so on, to be able to make effective decisions. And to do this, it's essential that you partner with the right people to be able to access that information. I go back to the point that mar enhanced market information isn't about what, what's happening in the market, it's, it's, it's as much about what's happening in your business and combining the two to, to establish a strategic plan. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Uh